All right, guys. So today's webinar is basics. Well, we're actually going to talk about uh, one of the reasons why I chose and, and found tape reading as my strategy, uh, and then we're also going to speak about uh, you know the current strategies that we employ right now, uh, and then how they kind of evolved over the years. Uh, you know, after I started out to just trading equities, and now all of a sudden trading options. So we're going to go on into all these basics, but before we talk about that. I have Charlie here, and he's going to tell you about some things that are going on in the world of St. Lucie. Yeah, guys. So uh, we know we have a lot of new followers here. Um, you know, whether it's coming in from the group on that we ran on Twitter, um, or you know, just kind of coming into our site. And we know a lot of you don't know that much about us. So we want to give a quick rundown on who St. Lucie is, how it's evolved from you know a blog that uh, that Lucie himself started into a company. You know that uh, that we are now running the three of us together. So I guess since I'm talking, I can give a quick intro about myself. Um, I graduated from from Duke in 2009, and I moved out to uh, Los Angeles. I was working in finance out there, bounced around for a little bit, working in film and stuff, um, some pretty crazy Hollywood, uh, you know, adventures. And then um, I ended up getting connected with Pete, and Pete knew Lucci, and these guys had the crazy idea of starting a hedge fund. Um, even with the atypical strategies that you know that we use, and uh, I came on to to help with the marketing and operations. And about after a month after we launched that, that was in January of 2012, we all moved out to New York. And uh, yes, option trader MJ, I am the white guy. Yes, that's me in the middle. Um, yes, and uh, we all moved out to New York. We all live and work together here um, in New York. We live out of a loft, and. Um, <laughs> yes, I do look ready. Yes, this is true. Um, so yeah, so that's that's me, and, and part of what I do is I run the marketing and stuff like that. I'm the guy that's letting you guys know about the offers that we have out there. So on that note, we have a webinar that's coming up on Wednesday too. It's about weekly versus monthly options. We're going to drop that link in the chat. We also have um, our 12-day course starting next week. Um, we'll go a little bit more into that as later on the webinar, but uh, if you sign up before Friday, you, we give you what's called the early bird special. So we're going to knock 250 bucks off the price. So that that will go down from 1750 to 1500. We offer payment plans for that too. Um, and lastly, if you don't want to shell out that much money, but you want to get involved in what we do, we do have a public chat room that we run. It's one dollar for the first 14 days. If you can't afford that, you probably should not be trading. Uh, Pete will drop that link into the chat as well. So I will stop talking now, and I will hand it over to Lucci. He's going to give you a quick rundown on his history and, and you know from trading and, and how uh, he's gotten to where he is now. All right. So, I mean, most of you guys actually might know this story already. And again, we're assuming there's a lot of new people in here. So, you know, we designed the, the layout for this webinar to, uh, to hit you guys. So, my intro, basically, I mean, I was, uh, I was a nobody, you know, after college. I studied finance. Uh, I became a financial analyst. Simply because I, you know, I had a child at a pretty young age, so so I needed to make sure, uh, you know, I had things going and a good paying job. And at that time, it was easy to get a job, guys. It wasn't like, uh, you know, it wasn't like now coming out of college. You know, a lot of you guys that, who are probably in college right now or, or or getting out, you know, it's pretty tough to get a job right now. Back then, and I say back then like I'm a freaking old guy, but uh, you know, like six, seven years ago, it wasn't that hard to get a trade to, to get a job, especially if you were in finance. So I started out as an analyst. And and believe me, like every job that I've had, I you know I don't do too well with authority and and you know let me just leave that on the table. Uh, so basically, it, it wasn't a good it wasn't a good experience, and you know it was just the same thing day in and day out. So I really felt useless, so to speak. Um, but you know, leaving was obviously pretty complicated. I, I told my girl that uh, I just quit without 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 giving any notice whatsoever. And, you know, obviously you guys probably know where that ended up. Um, so I ended up trading. So I was just surfing Craigslist, and I, and I ran through this, this uh, uh, you know, headline that said, uh, we're looking for equities traders. It's all commission-based. And that's kind of how I've lived, uh, you know, thus far up until that point, you know, up, up until the point I was 23. And I went in there, and it was just a bunch of kids in flip-flops. And... Uh, they were just they were just hitting buttons left and right. They were just hitting their F1, F2 key, and uh, you know just buying and selling whatever the hell they could get their hands on. 
And the day I walked in there, there was a kid that made 15 grand just one day. He was just one day. He made 15 grand. And uh, he bought the whole office pizza. And I was looking around the room. And I was like, all right. <laughs> this sounds all right. This sounds okay to me. Obviously, it's not that easy. You know, he was a veteran there. And basically what we did was just scalp traded equities. And it was all based on the tape and understanding what to look for when you're long a stock, what to look for when you're short a stock, uh, what to look for when there's a short squeeze, market sweeps, all the dynamics that actually move stocks up and down. I mean, they, they create these charts here. Like how to understand this stuff and, and how to understand bid and ask. I mean, the game was all simply bid and ask. If you don't understand those two concepts, then you know, again, you don't understand tape reading. Tape reading is about analyzing your bid and ask and analyzing minute-to-minute, minute, second second-to-second supply and demand so that if you know within, like, let's say, 10 seconds or a minute, the stock could go up 25 cents, you're buying 100 shares, uh, you know, and then you're selling for 20 cents up. And, you know, you, know, you make 25 cents on, on 100 shares or 1,000 shares, a couple hundred bucks here and there, and you do it 1,000 times a day. That was the strategy. And to, just to understand the tape, guys, I spent three to four hours a day just going back on the on the historical tape after the market closed. This was after the market closed, guys. So after the market closed, I would sit there and print out all the trades from the head trader. So in other words, you know, you would see a list kind of like you know, kind of like this, except just a huge a huge list of buy and sell orders, and you'd have a timestamp on it, and uh, you know, you'd have actual shares that were executed and all that kind of stuff. So I would print out all these trades from all the head traders every single day, right? Every single day, and then I would go back on the tape just to, you know, see what happened. So let's say on this LBS, right? Let's say on this LBS, I think this thing was up today. I don't know. Let's say right here, uh, the, you know, they went long from this consolidation. So I would scroll back to 11:45 on the tape, and then just look at the tape, look at what they saw, try to try to understand what they saw. And then try to understand what made them get out, what made them get in, all that kind of nonsense, so that I, I could finally understand, like, okay, you know, you know, you know, is this stock strong? Is this stock weak? What did they see that made them feel this stock was going to go higher? And I would just sit there and just scroll through. I would just scroll through the whole the whole tape. So if you have five minutes here, basically you're just scrolling from from down to up, and then you're just looking at the ticks. You're looking at where the price went off. You're looking at how many shares went off. You're looking at whether the transaction was done on the bid or the offer. There's a whole slew of things I was looking at, but basically I was just trying to understand, okay, what makes them buy and what makes them sell. I did this for like six months, guys, literally. I did this for six months straight, and I just sat here and just red tape for all kinds of moves. So if there was a sharp sell-off, if there was a slow bleed up, if there was, you know, a short and then a crazy short squeeze, I would learn what tape looks like for everything, for literally all kinds of moves um, and whatever I really could get my hands on. So that's where the tape reading came from. And then what I realized was is that when you're scalp trading equities and you're doing, let's say, 100 to 200 trades a day, and let's say your sheet is just filled with uh, uh, shares, shares traded, and let's say you traded like a million shares, you know, let's say you traded a million shares a day. That commission, depending on your rate from your from your broker or your prop firm, you know that commission really adds up. So let's say you're paying, you know, let's say you're paying two tenths or something like that, right? So you're paying two tenths for each share, you know, oftentimes and actually two thirds. So it'd be like two grand. So take another zero off this. Your commissions for a million shares would be anywhere from two thousand dollars to five thousand dollars. So that means you have to come in with five thousand. You have to make five thousand just to break even. Just to break even every single day, and I got I got sick of it. I was this is too much of a grind. It's like Kanish. Was that what's his name on the uh, in Rounders? Yeah, Kanish. Yeah. Kanish. Kanish. He was a grinder, and and that is the grinding game. And you can make money. You can make money. Don't get me wrong, but you really have to watch your over trading. You really have to watch your commissions. Uh, you really have to watch what routes you use, uh, and a lot of advanced things that you know I was kind of getting sick of. It. And then at that time, it was 2008, 2009. So, you know, you guys know where the market was in 2008, 2009. I mean, there was so much volatility. And my prop firm wasn't allowing me to, to trade the way I wanted to trade. So I was like, you know what? That's it. Screw you guys. I'm getting the hell out of here. And I'm going to start swing trading. So basically what I started doing was swing trading during 2009, 
summer of 2009. Obviously, it was perfect timing. And I was buying stocks like LVS, you know, for, for $3 and selling it at 7 and then buying it at 8 and selling it at 10 And I would have like fifty to 60,000 shares. So I was swing trading equities, but I was still using the tape. And then finally, I got turned on to options. And, and from there, I realized that, holy shit, if I bought 50,000 shares at three and sold it at seven, and I used the same money in an option, I would have made it like 10 to 20 times as much as I pulled down on the equity. Obviously, the risk is a lot more, but if you're a tape reader, you can mitigate a lot of that risk. And that's where really the focus on tape and, and the transference to, to options really kind of was born, so to speak. So that's kind of my, that's kind of my deal. And then my big trade, obviously, was, uh, was Citigroup, as everybody knows. So, uh, you know, this Citigroup back in 2009. Remember, this stock split, by the way, guys. So this, this move right here, this was the move right here. Uh, actually, let's go back a little bit more. Yeah, it was right here. So this move right here, I had a, you know, I had a, I think I had a, like a $3 call option. Maybe it was a $4 call option. Stock was at like 280 Remember, it was a 20 to 1 split, so that's why you're looking at the stock at 28 or so around here. So, you know, I caught this big move. My options went from $0.04 cents to freaking $0.70, cents, and that was all she wrote. That was my kind of trade of the day, or trade of, what is it, the, the, the infamous trade, or claim the fame, claim whatever, the fame. claim the fame, that's what it is. All right, and then 2010, I took a break, and I was spending money like a douchebag. <laughs> And, that, and that's why we're back here. That's why we have a hedge fund. That's why we're teaching classes because we got to make some money. Um, so, guys, just to fill you in, if you don't know what swing trading is, um, you know, day trading is sort of the, the quickest time frames. Um, you know, what Luchi was doing was scalping. So scalping is, you know, from a second to, you know, maybe a couple minutes, yeah. right? Yeah. Day trading is, you know, holding positions for maybe an hour or two. Um, you know, you're not holding anything overnight. That's day trading. Swing trading is holding positions overnight, so maybe one to five days, maybe even get into like two weeks if you're building up into a huge position like what Lucci did for Citigroup. Right. And then once you get past swing trading, you're basically talking about investing. Um, and you know, we do know a lot about investing with options, but that's not really our style. Uh, this is a good opportunity for me to introduce Pete. Yep. He is the third member of our team. He is sort of the quantitative expert here. I'm going to give him a chance to introduce himself and explain how trading with Lucci can completely changed uh, everything he thought he knew about options. Oh, yeah. yeah, so guys, so overall guys, uh, you know, I, have a, I have a quant background, so with all of you guys who think that um, that trading options needs to have implied volatility and needs to do all this crazy stuff and that you don't believe in cowboys swinging around options, uh, I will tell you at first experience, first hand experience, that that is completely wrong, all right? Um, the market makers out there, the big quant guys, don't want to believe that these things are possible. And the crazy thing that uh, you know that I've learned um, through like the past experience hanging out in prop firms, managing risk, and uh, hanging out with some HFT guys is that they always lose in their positions when somebody like Lucci or some big tape reader comes in and plays those options the way they do. And uh, this is where it actually comes back to you guys. All right, so. Coming from a quant perspective and coming from somebody who's actually looked and seen and heard a lot of what these HFT guys are doing and one of these uh, you know, quantitative model guys are doing, it's not applicable to you, okay? Maybe on a longer term sense if you're looking at like historical volatility and all this kind of stuff, but what you need to understand is that if you are trading um, due to the compression of prices in equities, you guys are probably not making deadly squat trading equities, putting on, you know, 20 or $25,000 positions making, you know, 200 bucks. That's cool and everything, but why don't you think about putting on $1,000 and making 200 bucks? And that, again, guys, has been, um, you know, a big thing, especially with the weekly options that have come out. There's so much volume that these things trade pretty much like, uh, like stocks, all right? And again, you know, we're not going to go too much into the secret sauce about it because, again, that's something we teach in our classes. But what you need to understand is that if you understand how to tape read, and you understand how to exercise some risk reward, um, there are very simple ways of translating this into being an options trader. And again, that's something we teach in our 12-day course. Um, but you know, from a quant perspective, 
you as a hand trader should be much less concerned about applied volatility, about gamma and all this kind of stuff, and just worry about your main things like your time decay and also about where you're buying your option versus how your stock is going. And that's another big portion of why, um, why, uh, why tape reading is important because if you don't understand the, the measured move per se or how much of a move your stock can go, you're really going to miss out on a lot of opportunities here. For instance, this price line, uh, I know people in my chat room today were thinking about shorting it. People in my chat room were thinking about shorting it last week and the week before, but little do they know that price line can move 200 points in you know a week and a half or two weeks, and it, it don't care. Okay, long hair don't care. Look at this thing. How, how smoked would you have been trying to short this thing? And then again, guys, it's shown through the tape. Uh, last week we were writing call options on it. We got out of it earlier because, again, the tape changed midday, and it was showing buying. And on Fridays, buying can get really freaking scary because you could write something from a dollar to twenty-five cents. It rips in your face, and then you're short, and you're you're you're, you're losing a ton of money. So again, guys, um, from the quant perspective, it is very, very, very important to understand reading the tape because the best way for you to be a successful hand trader is combining good risk reward on top of good uh, tape reading in your options trade. Indeed. So I think, Charlie, you want to preface the fund that we that we have right now, and then I'll go into some... Yeah, yeah, and guys, I think one of the things that people, one of the reasons that people get a little intimidated by what we do or, you know, by, by Uchi and Pete beyond, uh, you know, the language that we're throwing out and, you know, rants on Twitter and stuff is that we talk about really big gains, you know, and they say, this guy's made 800 grand so far this year, and yeah, you guys know about it because I brag about it in the emails because we have to market ourselves somehow, right? So, uh, you know, yeah, this guy's made 800 grand so far this year. How is, how am I, how is this relevant to me when I trade, you know, a $3,000 account? And uh, I want to hit on something that Pete just said. You know, people in his chat are trading accounts of all sizes. You know, yeah, there's guys in there with $250,000 accounts or $25,000 accounts, but there's also guys in there with $5,000 accounts, you know? You don't need um, you don't need to have a, an account the size of ours um, in order to, to do what we do. And just to add upon that, we've got a couple shout outs to guys like Garrett, uh, Calvary Confidence, um, you know, Kenny Crane, Officer Trader Jersey, all these guys, uh, Stritty, you know, you guys are you guys are really sick traders and you guys you know, I don't think you guys have uh, a hedge fund behind you. I don't think you guys are in the business of monitoring or operating a hedge fund, but for personal accounts, you know, Diddy Crane has, has, uh, has, has, I think he's tripled his account maybe like eight or nine times in the past Denny's, like six or seven months. And he's a freaking major. He's, he's Rob Wade in there caught uh, the Tesla long on some options. Jeez, this was a ridiculous long. He got it from three bucks to like $25. So, I mean, it's, again, guys, like, this is all relative. You know, you could put on one contract or one share positions, or you could put up, um, you know, any type of, um, you know, a bigger, a bigger proportion of uh, position. Uh, but again, you know, it really depends on your account size, and it's very, very doable. Um, I actually think that if you understand tape reading, creating, making an account that's three thousand bucks, twenty-five thousand, is much easier through options than it is through uh, stock. It's very, very dangerous playing penny stocks out there. Uh, especially if you're looking at like Tesla or what is it, LOTE, uh, all these penny stocks that you think should be going short, but look at our markets. We are hitting all-time highs and we are not stopping. You guys will get run over, all right? Don't be one of those guys. Uh, right. Make sure you understand what the hell you're doing out here. Okay, hey guys, and just jumping in real quick, we usually wait until the end to do Q&A, but I can't resist on this one. So David Hagan asked a question. I want to know the percentage gain St. Lucci is getting. 800K is nothing when you're trading $100 million. Totally agree with you. Uh, we are not trading a hundred million dollars, David. If you show want, them? And no, I don't know. We, we shouldn't show them, but for, for legal stuff. But David, if you want more information, definitely send me an email, CharlieSanguichi.com. I can have you sign an NDA, give you all the information on the fund. But I can tell you that we, um, you know, our account at the beginning of this year only had, it had less than three hundred thousand in it. Yeah. So yes, the gains are stupid. Um, you know, it's, it's a volatile fund. Everyone who invests in it knows that, but this is not about the fund. This is about trading style. Uh, hit me up, channelisinglucci.com. I will give you all the information you want. All right. So now let's get into some nitty-gritty stuff. Um, you know, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we expressed in this webinar 
was why tape reading is more important than you know a lot of the other analysis and a lot of the other indicators that you use out there. So what I wanted to do was just kind of roll through a certain example and just kind of point out places where a lot of retail traders they have a difficult time trading. And the market makers and the smart money, they all know this as well. So what I wanted to do was show uh, a stock like this one. This was Google. All right. Now, Google obviously had a ginormous run. And oftentimes, you know, there's, there's, there's always these certain areas or points in time where you need to just swing long, be ignorant, and just keep buying and buying and buying. But after these moves get so exhausted, meaning, you know, they, 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 kind of, they kind of go as far as they can, which you never know where the top is. And that's another thing why, you know, shorting, uh, you know, uh, some of this bullishness out there has really caught some of traders, uh, has really caught a lot of traders on the wrong side and has really produced a significant amount of losses. And if you tape read, you really start to understand when to pull that trigger and when to really load up. You also understand when to just be light in a position. You, uh, you understand how to just give it time to breathe. You also understand how an option looks like, okay? You start to understand how options prices move, okay? And this is if you're doing a lot of tape reading, even on your option, if you're tape reading your option on any particular level too. So if you're able to look at a time in sales on an option, so for example, if we're taking a look at this Google uh, uh, call here, I think this was the 925 call, and if you're able to look at a time in sales or a level two on an option, you really start to understand strength and weakness. You start to understand, okay, should I get ahead of this? Should I buy this? Because there's a lot of people trying to bid up. There's a lot of people taking the offer. You know, there's a lot of concepts with bid and ask and how they interact with one another and where the transactions are going off that really show you the story. They really just open up the, the, the book to you so that you can really make better decisions, okay? So what I wanted to do is just go ahead and give a quick example. Of, of consolidation and then, you know, the, the, the sort of range trading that market makers and smart money they put us in, and a lot of the retail money gets really screwed because of it, okay? So, uh, let's take a look at this Google. So, she tops out, right? She tops out. Next day, remember this day right here is when they uh, put out in the pre-market that uh, some analysts upgraded this thing to $1,000. Now, guys, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think the sentiment is? When some analyst says, all right, uh, this is, this is going to go to 1000 bucks, right? This is going to go to 1000 bucks. Every retail trader in the world, right, who has, let's say, missed this whole move, right? And you're talking about retail, and not even retail. You're talking about dumb uh, uh, people that really don't understand how the markets work, right? You see all of a sudden price target increase to $1,000. What do you do? You jump out and go buy it right away. And little do they know, I mean, little do they, are you looking at the fact that, okay, she's up 120 points. Stock just don't keep going up. You know, there's always washouts, and then they kind of keep going. Okay, that's just how it works. Smart money is there to make sure you're on the wrong side of the trade before the real move happens. Okay? So, you know, what do you think happened here? Everybody got washed out, and then all of a sudden, in one day, she's right back to 800 bucks. This was on the earnings call, and then just slowly, slowly, slowly. Same thing happened in Priceline. But now let's take a look at this consolidation up here. So now they have a range, right? They have this range, and they're pushing it towards the low end of the range, meaning what? You want to get short because she's up 120 points, and you're saying, all right, all right, come on. Enough's enough. Enough's enough. This thing's going to, this thing's going to start going down. Now, if you're not a tape reader, what are you going to do? You're going to end up just buying put options, and then you're just going to watch them slowly dwindle on you. Okay? So I want to show you two examples of options that you guys, okay, and I'm, and I'm saying you guys because I'm, I'm, I'm almost willing to bet that many of you guys did this already, okay, that's the only reason I'm throwing it out there. I understand retail trader behavior and hence why I can speak about these things, all right? So let's say you bought uh, May 24 and you're buying put options, right? You're buying, let's say you're buying the 900, okay? You're buying the 900 and you started buying last week. Okay, well, let's take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at the, the, the last couple of days, okay? Now, what are you paying for this option, okay? Let's take a look at what you're paying for this option. You're paying around 10 bucks for this option, okay? Because, again, this stock's going towards $900, right? It kept going towards $900, so what are you doing? You're paying the highs of this, okay? And especially over here, this was on Friday. Stock looked like it wanted to bury through 200 bucks, 
never did it. Everybody got short right here. Everybody got short right here. And then what happens? You're paying ten dollars, and now look at your option. Now look at your option. This is the plight of most retail money. Okay, this right here. You're looking at it right here. And the same thing with this one right here. Now let's take a look at the calls. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. Now, if you guys were planning on going along this thing, uh, because you're looking for more moves, you know, you're looking for nine thirty, you're looking for nine forty. Oh shit, she's going to a thousand dollars. Let's go, let's go. We want to get long. We want to get long. We want to get long, right? You, what do, what do you think retail money is buying these options? You go ahead, take a guess. They're buying it right here. They're buying it right here, and they're buying it right here. Okay, this is where this is the plight of the retail money. And this is where tape can really help you because why? Why? Because you're now assessing the price action when it gets up here to these breakout levels. Okay? If it's a real move, you're going to see those buyers push right through, and this thing's going to just keep going up and up and up and up and up. If it's a real move, if those buyers are there and if it's supported. Now, after stocks go into consolidation, this is where it gets most tricky for most retail traders. And this is one of the most important things that you can understand about the necessity of using the tape because it saves you from a lot of this nonsense here okay so this is obviously an overbought stock it's already trading 900 bucks there's a thousand dollar price target on it she gaps up to 920 and what does she do collapse right collapse in people's faces after they put out a thousand dollar price target on this thing okay and then what does she do this morning market is strong okay market is strong price line is strong right and what did they do with this Google? What did they do with this Google? They ripped this Google all the way up to 920. Everybody goes long. Everybody goes long saying, all right, this is it. We're getting 930. We're getting 940. Market's still going. And what happened? What happened? Right? This is what happens to most retail money. And this is what, again, this is what we try to teach our traders and why we try to teach tape reading simply because it can help you make some better decisions. It can help you pick the most appropriate strategy for a certain type of environment, for a certain type of market. I mean, if it's go, 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 go long, go long, go long, that's it. You're buying calls like crazy. If the market's doing nothing or your stock is doing nothing and just kind of rolling around, buying, going long options is very difficult. Imagine if you went long this thing at six and a half or seven bucks. What are you going to do? What, what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and wait until premium just decays on you? You can't buy options that have a specified expiration time without understanding timing. Okay? Timing is everything in options. It is literally everything. And you can't get timing down unless you learn how to read this. Okay? So let's just screw around on this Google tape here real quick. Let's screw around on this Google tape real quick. So let me show you a couple things on bid and ask. Very basic stuff. Obviously, we want you guys to take the class if you want the, the, the advanced versions of all of this. So let me go, go ahead and scroll through some of this, and then we'll go ahead and take some questions after. So let me go ahead and do like 20 minutes on this. Uh, so let's pull up 9.50. Guys, this is, uh, this is pretty similar to what Bucci and Pete do in class. Yes. Right? I mean, this is some really awesome content. We actually get yelled at by some of our students and followers because they're like, you guys give away way too much free information, but we kind of believe that this is the best way to, you know, be transparent and convince you guys that we're the real deal, so definitely enjoy this. Okay, all right, so what am I looking at? What are some things that I'm looking at? So I've, if, if we're all bullish Google, right, if we're all bullish Google, what are some things that I need to happen, okay? Now let me just go ahead and throw out some things that I look for when I'm long a stock and, um, you know, I need my tape to support my theory, okay? What are some of the things I look for? Number one, number one thing when you're watching tape is the most important. It is the reaction, okay? It is where the transactions are going off. Are they going off on the bid or are they going off on the offer, okay? And what this translates to is that there's more demand or more supply at that present moment, at that time. So let's say uh, if you see all your transactions going off on the offer, meaning people are buying 99s, 88s, they're buying 918, they're going through 918, they're buying 19, 920, uh, all this kind of stuff. That's when you know you really have some aggressive activity. I like a lot of these sweeps, okay? Now notice this is all the same second right here. So this is somebody saying, all right, give me, give me, give me all that stock at 918. Uh, and then look at this, you know, I like to see a bunch of upticks and then I like to see my bid stepping up, okay? So this kind of translates to buyers saying, 
all right, you know what? Screw my limit order at 71. I want to buy at 86. I want to buy at 99. I want to buy at 918 because they see the stock moving up and they say, all right, shit, I'm not going to get my order filled here. I'm sitting on the bid down here. There's no way I'm going to get my order filled. So let me take this 300 shares and plop it at 918. I want in and I want in now. That's the kind of sentiment that you're looking for. Okay? And one thing I want to reiterate too before we go any further is that take reading, this is not an exact science. Okay? This is not one of your, okay, wait till moving average 20 crosses 50 and then go ahead and make a trade. We don't do that game. We don't play that game. We don't look at RSIs. We don't look at any of this stuff. All I care about is do I have a buyer? Do I have a seller? Are they coming back? Are they aggressive? If not, what the hell am I doing in this trade? That's it. You know, if there's nothing going on, then I want to be a seller of the premiums. Okay? That's it. Point blank. I want to be a seller of these premiums to all the dumb retail that thinks the stock is going to go to the moon. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the tape and I see a seller that is holding this thing down and I see a reluctance for this thing to get over 920. So I'll sell you seven bucks all day. You go, you want to buy six and a half? Fine. I'll sell you a thousand contracts. Fine. Simply because I'm looking at the tape and I feel that, I feel that, all right, there's no, these buyers really don't have the juice. They don't have the power to push this thing up. So I'll flip on the other side and I'll say, all right, all you retail guys that want calls, I'll sell them right to you. I'll sell them right to you in the bulk loads. Okay? So again, what am I looking for? I'm looking for where the transactions are going off. And you can see most of them are going off right now on the offer. You can see your bid stepping up. So right now, just by a glance, you know, this does look like a decent stock to be long. You see all these upticks here. Um, you know, and now you're looking for another support level. You see a couple decent sized ticks. And then you see this guy. You see this guy plopping up 1,500 shares at 9, 18, 24. This is good. You want buyers to have some size behind you, and that way you know there's people behind you should you need to get out. This is all good stuff for being uh, a, a long, uh, long in this particular stock. Now, obviously, you don't, you don't want to see them get sold right away, which would happen here at 24, uh, and then the same thing happened at 16 here. So, you know, this thing is kind of dancing around. And then when I see dancey tape, when I see, you know, tapes kind of just throwing around and, and going up and down, Again, you can't really get much read on it, uh, and you don't want to be too much of a part of it. You don't want to be too heavy in these things. Now, this is the important thing. So now you've got a guy that says, holy shit, i got 13,000 shares. i got 13,000 shares to sell at 918.12. So what the hell did this guy do? Okay? This is tape at its finest. You throw out 13,000 shares on the offer, what do you think is going to happen? Look at everybody, scared as shit. Everybody gets scared, and everybody says, all right, that's it. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Because in order for this stock to go up, somebody has to buy 13,000 shares here. Somebody has to buy this guy out. Otherwise, this stock doesn't go up. And if you don't feel there are buyers here enough to push this stock through 918.12, then what the hell are you doing going along this thing, right? So she prints all the way down to 916, and now it's about the reaction. Now we want to see the reaction, okay? So when she gets down there, does she come right back and challenge that guy at 918? Look at this thing. Just kind of dump it. So clearly, they're afraid of size right now. They're very afraid of size right now. We're already back to 916. And now you're kind of looking for that reaction. Look at this. Already down to 915. I don't want, I know just by looking at this, is these buyers do not have the juice. If they saw a 13,000 share offer, okay, and this move was real, and this move, it was timing, and it was about to go, I mean, this, this 13,000 shares would have got printed right away, okay? Somebody would have been glad to eat that up if this was a real move and she was going to bust through 920. Someone would, would have been happy to eat that 13,000 shares up. And also to think, guys, if you're a seller and you know that the move is real, why would you sell it at 917.90 when you know that the buyers are strong enough so you can sell your 13,000 shares exactly. at 920 or 925? Why would you do that? So in essence, guys, you know, just the very basic things that we went over here on the tape, these are just some small, minor um, examples of how the tape works. Right. Um, there is actually a science. We've actually, some crazy things have been happening. We've been working with uh, some really cool guys out here. Is that we are actually learning to pull the tape out. Uh, right now, it's only going to be uh, post-tape, so we'll actually be able to see if it's a market maker, if it's an institution, that's all this kind of stuff, that's good which is real, real tape action, real information there. But what you have to understand, again, guys, is that these are actionable ideas. If you learn to focus your efforts on certain stocks and how they react, 
you understand the behavior. I hate using the word behavior because from a quant perspective, qualitative crap doesn't mean anything to me. Right. But when you're talking behavior in this sense, it's like, all right, you have to understand sort of like why buyers are getting in, how they're getting in, and you'll be able to even see it on the options. You'll see big players and small players playing in the options. They have a, there's a feedback loop back and forth. So again, guys, make sure you understand tape reading or you will get smoked out of there just like half the people today yeah. that held their longs too long and they held yeah. their shorts too long. Yeah. You know, everybody got smoked back and forth today. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't do anything. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and there's a reason why. And and again, like I'm starting to you know, I had this issue where I always had the instinct to read the tape, but I wasn't necessarily listening to it. And now these days, obviously as you can see by some of my gains, you know, just for the past couple of months, I'm really starting to act on those instincts and really starting to doubt most of these moves because guys, most of the time that you buy an option, most of the times that you buy an option and go net long, a call or a put, this is the kind of chart that you're going to take a look at. You're going to be right for a couple of seconds and then it's just going to turn on you because simply the timing is not there and the tape doesn't support that move happening right now. Okay? And again, just to go back to our particular strategy, the reason why we take, it seems like we take that much risk on a daily move, playing a weekly option that's going to expire let's say three days or two days or even one day from now, then the reason why we do that is because of this. The reason why that's, this is the whole thing. This is everything. I don't make a move unless I see a reason to on the tape. That's it. Okay? Um, Charlie, did we want to add anything before we start taking some questions here? Yeah, guys. Um, so we're going to be answering a lot of your questions here. If you have questions and you haven't typed them already in the questions chat, just start typing them and we're going to get to them. But before we do that, we're going to launch uh, at least one poll, maybe two. This is going to be like up on the screen for 15 seconds. We're just trying to get a feel for where you guys are at in terms of options trading. We want to put education out there that's relevant to you. And so we're just going to ask you to respond to this poll real quick. And uh, let's see. Yep. So yeah, just click the button, whatever applies to you. Um, give us your feedback on that and we'll know uh, what kind of stuff to, to give you guys in the future. All right, you want me to start now? Uh, 925 call was just a, a, an example. Yeah, this was just today, an example. Today doesn't necessarily mean that 925 would be the special spot, but if you're asking us how we select them, come check out our class. Indeed. Unfortunately, again, one of the biggest portions of office trading is one, tape reading, and two, selecting the right options at the right time, depending on your expiry, your measured move, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. And again, that would take a, a, another probably five or six of these webinars to do. Yeah. Thankfully, we do have those in our classes. Uh, I think we're wrapping that section of that cool. this week. So. Cool. Paul is asking, please explain a market sweep and what it tells you in various cases. All right. So let me give you an example of what a market sweep would look like. I mean... You know, again, me just scrolling here through the tape, what you're looking at on the tape is just basically the same seconds, so everything's going off in the same, so you see it right here. Uh, so again, we saw this big seller, right? You saw this big seller right here, 13,000 shares in 918.12. Imagine if you had, a, you know, imagine if you had uh, uh, 3,000 shares long, okay? Uh, hang on a second. Is that better, guys? <clears throat> okay, apologies for that. I don't know what happened. Um, okay, so imagine, you know, you see this 13,000 share guy come in at 918.12. And imagine you yourself, you're holding 10,000 shares, right? You're holding 10,000 shares long, or let's say you're even holding 5,000 shares long. And you're sitting there waiting for somebody to test this guy. And you don't see shit, right? And all of a sudden you panic. And what do you, what do you start to do? you're going to start bailing out of your position. Now, what are some things that you could do to bail out of your position? Okay? And, guys, this is at the essence of tapering. What happens if you put a 5,000 share offer in front of a 10,000, in front of a 13,000 share offer? What do you think would happen, guys? And who asked me this question? Let's put it back to Pauly D here. Pauly D, Pauly D, Jer Jersey Shore mofo here. Pauly D is asking this. So, Pauly D, you're going to answer this question. What do you think would happen if, if I put out 13,000 shares on the offer and then you put out 5,000 shares at 917 and a half? What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Pauly D, you know, you're usually so talkative. Man, Jersey Shore, you got all kinds of things to say. Pauly D, what do you think would happen? We're going to give him one, two, three, 
four, five, it took too long. It's going to dump out. It's going to dump out. Absolutely, it's going to dump out. Who would buy that? You know, if you're seeing people, if you're seeing people selling aggressively on the offer, then everybody's going to get scared and smoke this bid out, and this stock is going down. And meanwhile, Pauly D, you can't get your 5,000 shares filled. So what do you need to do? You got to sell a thousand. You got to sell two thousand in the market. Okay. So you're going to come out like this. So you're going to sell a couple thousand shares in the market, and this is what it's going to look like. So this is the sweep order. It just takes everything on the book. So it takes your nine, seventeen, eleven. It takes your twelve. It takes your double O's. It takes your sixty-six. It takes everything down off the book. Okay. So what you're doing is you're sending a market order, and it's sweeping. It's sweeping whatever is there and whatever is available. Okay. Now remember, one thing to note, if you're sending market orders here, guys, your market maker can screw you on the price. They can absolutely destroy you on the price, okay? Especially if you're, if you're in illiquid names like Google, like Priceline, things like that, all right? So I always watch for reaction to that market sweep, okay? Oftentimes you'll see really, really aggressive market sweeps and stocks really caving in very quickly. So if you see this Google, Right off the open, she dumped about a good 15 points, and this was like within minutes. So this was was within minutes, you know, within 10 minutes. And this was a lot, a lot of market sweeps, a lot of market orders that were going on. Okay, and you can really see that on the table as well. Okay. So what else we got? What else we got? I know we got a bunch of other questions here. Uh, Nathan is saying, I'm curious to know your morning routine for validating your ideas of how the market will move for the day, excluding breakfast. Oh, you don't want to know what I eat in the morning? What about hungover or not hungover? Yeah, what's that's a completely different routine. Yeah, yeah Nathan, you know, <laughs> it dep am I hungover? Am I not? All right. Uh, so what I do, again, every morning, I just look at which one of my stocks is gapping up or down. Obviously, this morning, this price line was the juiciest one. Uh, you know, so that would be the one that I would focus on for the particular day. Remember, I only trade a small basket of stocks, so I'm not concerned uh, with anything else that is going on there besides the stocks that I play. If these things aren't doing anything, I should be doing nothing, or or I should be selling premium to all the chumps who are sitting there buying, looking for the alpha moves. All right, so this price line gapped up like 10 points or 11 points on a price target upgrade, just like Google, up to about 900 bucks, and then the thing just ripped off the open. Um, you know, so I looked for some of these things. I knew this, you know, I was kind of watching this Apple with some of the other guys. But again, I'll just scroll through my names, and literally, guys, I will take read simply by using my watch list, too, because you can see if all the financials are up and all the financials are pushing higher. Like, okay, maybe the juice is going into the financials. Maybe I can catch a trade there. Maybe the juice is going to the credit cards. Maybe there's nothing to trade, and, and you know, I should sit on my hand and do nothing. So for the breakfast or for the morning routine, guys, it's simply just looking at my watch list, looking at where we are on the market, and just timing everything. It's just coming up with new theories to either prove or disprove on the tape. So if my theory now is to go short the market, let's say, and I want to get a short off on this Google, um, then all I do is sit here and I watch the tape on Google day in and day out, and I say, okay, you know, does she look ready? Does she look ready? Does she look strong now? What's the sentiment? Is she more bearish? Every time she gets to 900, is that buyer still there? Or, you know, when it breaks through 900, does it look weak? Or is it just slowly chopping out and I'm going to just rip this thing right back, you know? So these are all the theories that I have going on in my head. And then all I'm trying to do is prove or disprove them on the tape. If they're unproven, then I don't do shit. Uh, all right, let's keep going, let's keep going. What else we got? Uh, Nathan is saying, also, I know you guys write options, but it is, it, it is quite profitable, but it does require a large account size. For us smaller retail guys who can only buy options, how do we play against right? Okay, great. Nathan, that's a great question. That's a great question. This is a great question. So, guys, pay attention. Nathan is saying that with my piddly account, right, with my piddly uh, whatever the hell it is, a couple thousand or whatever you got, uh, you know, how do I compete here? How do I compete in a game where most of the money is made on the right side, right? How does he compete? That's a great question. Now, number one, number one thing that you have to do when you have a small account, you got to be more selective, okay? And that 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 also can be proven or, or, or can be helped by tape reading itself. Because if you're tape reading and you're looking at supply and demand and you know you're not going to get it moved that day, then what are you doing trading it? You know, most people who have larger accounts, they trade like animals. They trade like animals, right? And they have just sheets and sheets of, of buy and sell orders. And meanwhile, the market's doing absolutely nothing, and there's no money to make. 
and they'll sit there and just churn their accounts to zero simply because you know they just want to sit there and 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 go after shit that's not there. So Nathan, for you, it really is you being more selective. Um, and then you can also do spreads. Okay, you can also do spreads. So if you guys have even five thousand, ten thousand dollar accounts, you can do spreads, and this will help cut the cost down. And your broker will allow you to actually do some credit spread trading. Pete, did you want to add something on this one? Uh, okay. Uh, Dennis has got to go for the next guy. Will you relax? I'm trying to get it teed up. So Dennis is asking questions about uh, spreads and whether we you we look at spreads ahead of time before it should get into trades. Okay. And also, um, if we use TradeStation for our tape. No, we don't use TradeStation. We use Rocks, which is our uh, proprietary platform. Um, but looking at spreads is important. But what you need to understand is uh, kind of the, the basics. Well, actually, some more advanced stuff in the spreads to make sure that you get good prices, especially in options. I know you guys out there that are playing the price lines uh, are very familiar with 50 cent spreads and 60 cent spreads, possibly even a dollar spreads. It's relatively hard to catch. Um, but depending on how the move looks, it might be time for you to just hit the offer and uh, take advantage of it. But a lot of times with guys with smaller accounts, you should ping around. Um, again, that's something we teach in our advanced course. But um, pinging in and out of, uh, depending on your lean on the offer or the bid, uh, might be a better idea instead of going straight at the uh, straight at the offer or straight at the bid. Um, so again, that's more of an advanced question, but uh, we do uh, we do mess around with those um, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, getting into trades. Dennis, are you a are you a market maker? Because that would that's a market maker question. That's 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 you're getting close to market maker questions. <laughs> you always get kind of sketched out by market makers because sometimes we occupy yeah. like eighty percent of the options. Yeah. I mean, like, when I blitz, when I get heavy, guys, and and you you've seen me take a pretty heavy, you know, a long position. And let's say Bank of America or Google or whatever. I'll oftentimes have all of the size, you know. So all of this will be me, you know. And if a market maker understands what I'm doing or understands where I'm going. There's a lot of potential that he can gain me out of it, and there's a lot of tricks they have. There's a lot, there's a lot of tools they have in their arsenal uh, to gain to gain you guys out of it. Retail people don't even know about this shit, uh, you know. And tape reading helps you get hit to it. All right. Uh, I think we're gonna take we're gonna take a couple more questions, but before we do that, we have another poll here. Hey guys, I know you love know. these polls. I'm gonna throw another one up here um, while Lucci's teeing up the next question. Just click your responses real quick. The faster you do it, the faster you'll get off the screen. Dennis, is, Dennis, these are really good questions. So um, you were asking questions about ETFs. So we do look at ETFs. Definitely. Uh, spy, of course, all the time. Spy all the time. But uh, what we like to do, especially, again, you know, we had a previous webinar on how small our watch list is, is that we actually have a better sense uh, of when the, uh, the ETFs are actually going to move prior to that because we're watching the leaders and the more heavily weighted um, stocks out there like Apple, Google, and all those guys. All right. All right. So uh, we had a couple questions I skipped over. Uh, uh, John is saying, I have a Series 6. When are you accepting new prop traders to trade with your new fund? What, what's, what did he say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, He's we, like, shh, shh, shh. Send an email. Send an email to us. Peter at sangluchi.com for yes. info on the prop. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, any tape-related questions here? Let's talk about tape in particular. You know, any stuff that you guys have seen on the tape that maybe I can, uh, you know, shed some light on for, uh, you know, the basic purposes here. Uh, okay, options trader is saying, talk about conviction. When they take down a big lot on the ask, what would that carry into the next day of trading, or does it work on an individual day-to-day -day basis? Great question. Great question. All right, so I'm going to actually put this to this apple. All right, and you got lucky here at Options Trader, um, simply because oftentimes, <coughs> depending on if it's a real big picture breakout or not, okay, and this is this is uh, you know this is some pretty valuable information here. Most of the time, most of the time, guys, when you're going long alpha and you're going long for a big picture move, it's not going to happen. Nine out of ten times, it's not going to happen. You're going to be up for a little bit, and then you know your trade is going to be wrong. There's just more posturing and more time that needs to elapse before that trade can happen. Now, everybody's been on this Apple long. And obviously, if you know when it got crushed down here through 400, 
everybody's picking it up, and this was just a monumental run. You know, anybody that caught this, did, you know, made some pretty good money. I think we made like 250 grand off this move, but I sold out maybe, you know, 435, 440. I don't think I got most of this. Um, now, what I want to say, though, is that when you're on the cusp of a big picture move, and I'm talking about this day right here, okay? This is the day, this day, yeah, this day right here. I think it was these two days right here. What I saw on the tape, and unfortunately we're not going to go back simply because Apple tape is impossible to get. You only get 20 seconds at a time. What I saw on the tape here, and, and anybody in my chat room is, you know, can attest to this. What I saw was a 10,000 share buyer um, continue to come back uh, for a good, I want to say maybe about 20 times plus, okay? A 10K buyer, all right, 20K buyer, sometimes it was around 80 uh, sometimes he would step his lots up too, all the way from 412 uh, up to about 417 or 418, okay? And this guy was just buying. <laughs> he was just buying the bid every single time it smoked through a new double zero. So all of a sudden you would see 412, and then you would see a buyer come in for 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. He would get sold to. People would sell to him, and he would keep buying. He would keep buying. And they did this for a good four or five points. And that was the that was the that was what all I needed to see. So Gamba, uh, and I say Gamba here. Uh, he's one of my uh, chat room guys. He's Options Trader NJ. Um, so the answer to that question is, if it's a big pick move, and you're seeing a huge buyer like that on the tape, then that's how you know there's going to be follow through. That's how you know he either wants more stock, and he's just slowly he's just slowly building it and trying to make sure he breaks up his order so that nobody knows he wants to get 2 million shares long or 3 million shares long or whatever the hell he wants to do, um, you know, they'll start breaking up that order and slowly pushing it up. And, and OT, I mean, that's when we started that trade. So oftentimes, it does filter into the next day and the next day after that if you have these big buyers. <coughs> and then it's just a cascade effect. So people just get in front, other people buy in front, and then it just kind of keeps going and keeps going. And they use other manipulation games uh, uh, to get in, in that stock versus what they were doing before. Uh, no, he's asking about a, does a 13K seller not going to market bring up the chance to sell his discipline and portend higher prices days or weeks later? You let us know if you care about the price days or weeks later. We care about the price right now, five minutes from now, ten minutes from now, twenty minutes from now, because again, where the price goes in the next five, ten, twenty minutes, we can make the equal amount in that time through weekly options as compared to um, a monthly option or a longer term status. But when you're talking about this 13K seller, I would actually say that the likelihood is that this is a professional trader and that he's actually manipulating the stock down lower for the day right. instead of actually showing his size. Real sellers out there, real buyers, don't show, show size anymore. Right, Garrett Gay. Gary here has a great question. Before I field that one, I want to hit up this Sean McGrath. Sean McGrath is saying Bazzi. Bazzi is Kyle Bazzi from MarketFi. He says, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Listen, I got, I got a million bucks I can slap you in the face with right now. <laughs> Gary is saying, how about a comment on gauging the pressure from players buying uh, options at a specific strike price as opposed to players buying the equity? Do you focus more on the underlying tape or specific contract tape? This is a great question, too. All right, so answer the next question in the most basic form. Uh, we watch both, and it's important to watch both because oftentimes what you'll see is a miscorrelation to one of the two. So all of a sudden, maybe your tape or your stock is not doing anything, but you see a ridiculous buyer going out of the money on some calls in Google or whatever the hell you're watching. So if, if all of a sudden you're seeing hundreds and hundreds of contracts going off on the offer, and then moving up this option price, and the stock's not going anywhere, that could be an indication that the stock is ready to move. Vice versa. Vice versa, too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of games being played uh, between the underlying and the actual option. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's kind of up to the market maker to set the price here uh, that we're really following. But, you know, other players in the game, if they want to build up, you know, significant contracts before an expected move is going to happen, you can definitely see some of these guys coming in to some of these out-of-the-money options uh, and just bidding the crap out of these things. And again, there's a science to getting large orders filled on the options, too. You know, they can hide orders on the options. They can, uh, they can only show one contract when they, when, they, when they mean to buy 
300 or 400 contracts. They can also spread out this thing. The market makers can cut out the spread and make you buy 260 and make you buy 270. Uh, you know, if you see somebody jumping the spread aggressively and buying the offer, you know, aggressively without this bid coming back up, you know, maybe this guy just wants to get stupid long and he knows something that I don't. Um, you know, so absolutely, Garrett, we watch both very, very closely. So I watch tape on the equity as much as I watch tape and level two on my option or any option that I'm watching. I think uh, we should uh, wrap it up there, guys. You know, we got a lot of questions in here. Shoot us an email, Lucci at TakeLucci.com. There's a ton of questions, and this is going to be incredibly hard to get over. But what you need to understand is that tape reading is, there is a science to tape reading. It is really freaking hard, and what we've actually done, uh, because of Lucci's, whatever, 10,000 hours, if you want to call it, has been able to circumvent the science of it. So again, guys, make sure you come and check out our full, full, full length course. Okay, you, We will delve into this a lot. You will have one-on-one -on -one time with all of us. Uh, do they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once, once you sign up for the 12-day, you get basically uh, full access to, to Lucci and, and Pete. Uh, Pete, like, just doesn't sleep. I come in at midnight from, from going out, and he's on calls talking about options with God knows who. So. No, he sleeps. I come back at 4 in the morning. He's oh, like, yeah, <laughs> Lucci comes back at 4 in the morning. He's probably, Lucci's talking about options at the bar, I'm sure. Um, yeah, Chris, you asked if there will be a recording available. Yes, there will be. And, yeah, absolutely. Please send it around to people that you know. Obviously, we want to get our... Uh, you know, ourselves out there to as many people as we can. So guys, Early Bird Special, just type Early Bird into um, the 12-day course checkout. That saves you 250 bucks. You've got to sign up before Friday, though, to take advantage of that. We got the one day, um, $1 for 14 days in the chat that Pete runs. I think these links are all in the chat, Pete, but uh, yeah. Pete will throw them in there again. And then we got the webinar Wednesday. Sign up for that. Um, thanks for joining, guys. We really appreciate it. Yeah, one thing, actually, before, before we leave, one, one thing I wanted to reiterate, because we do have a lot of new people in here, and I want you guys to understand why we choose this method and why we choose this method of teaching, too. Like, I came from doing alerts, guys. I came from doing alerts, Very good point. and what I realized from running a chat room with sending out emails and sending out texts for options, alerts, and stuff like that, was that people don't understand what the hell they're doing. No, people truly don't understand what the hell they're doing. And when they follow alerts, when they when, again, yeah, when they well in general, but when they <laughs> when they follow alerts, most people who follow alerts in a you know from an options perspective, they don't know what the hell they're doing. Especially when they get that alert, they don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know what the price. They don't know how to move into an option or out. And I realized this was just a really bad way of going about it. And I felt wrong. I felt I felt there was an ethical issue with me sending an alert. For an option to buy, let's say at two bucks. Meanwhile, you get the alert. The option is already at three dollars, three and a quarter. You buy at three and a quarter. I'm selling to you. That's not cool, you know. And 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 that's simply because of the timing aspect of it, and the fact that you don't know what the hell you're doing. So what we decided was to scrap that whole model. We scrapped that whole model, and I said, look, all I want to do is teach people who are hungry for that information. That's it. If you're hungry for the information. I can hook you up. There are some guys actually that have been asking about the private chat room. We've been keeping the private chat room actually hush hush uh, because again, only the guys who actually take the full course get access to the right. private chat room. So right. nobody actually sees this. Uh, the private chat room has other fund managers in it. Right. Has a lot of good informational guys in there. Uh, Lucci uses it personally to uh, to create ideas for for options trades. Yeah. Um, and the and reason again, yeah. wants to be advanced. Yeah. Be advanced. And the, and the reason why I wanted my own private chat was because, guys, I had a room where I had like over 200 people in it, and it was a shit show. It was a complete shit show. Everybody's doing all kinds of nonsense, and it's too much to manage, and, and it's ridiculous. So what I wanted was more of a place where people uh, who I knew were serious about trading, not just some schmuck who, wanted, who, who wants a quick alert and who can tell everybody he's up, but, you know, 100% off of it. That's not what we do. I'm, I don't want I don't want anything to do with that. If you guys are making money, awesome, great, great, you know. But at the end of the day, I'm not out there to 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 put you on blast, to put you on a video, and all that kind of stuff. We want to find the traders who, who give a shit about their craft, who want to learn more, who want to spend the time, and who really want to put in the effort uh, uh, to make some of this stuff work. And 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 those are the traders that we're really after. And that's why we we scrap the whole alerts thing. All right. So, uh,
without further ado here, let's close it up. And guys, of course, we will have this recorded. It'll be on the website, YouTube, and all that kind of other nonsense. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for joining. And we'll see you Wednesday. We're doing another webinar. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday, a webinar on weekly options versus monthly options. Versus monthly options. It'll be good. All right? So we'll see you guys next time.